Kate Kate. Why the trolls keep going. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor. Many of you are aware that the Princess of Wales was moved to share the fact that she has been diagnosed with cancer and is receiving treatment to deal with that. Back in January, she had abdominal surgery. That was a private matter. She is, of course, a public figure, and it would be noticed that she would not be making appearances, and therefore it was deemed appropriate to explain that she would be having medical treatment, would be convalescing thereafter, and wouldn't be seen until some time around Easter. That was sufficient information to be shared. Naturally, there are those that would not accept such information. The press wanted to know why she was having abdominal surgery, and then a multitude of idiots on the internet thought it was their business to speculate about why she was really missing. The Princess of Wales was then subjected to what can only be described as a campaign of bullying and harassment, whereby there was repeated speculation about where she was and why she was missing. Despite the fact that it had been made plain that she had had abdominal surgery and was convalescing, this was not accepted. She was in a coma. She'd left Prince William. Prince William had assaulted her. She was dead. She was under the patio at Kensington Palace. An array of ridiculous and preposterous theories were advanced, circulating on social media and being picked up by the mainstream press. Rather than recognise that a medical condition is personal and private to the individual concerned, and, as I've pointed out previously, notwithstanding the fact that Catherine has a public role, at the end of the day, it is entirely correct to point out that the world does not turn because of her. She is not the leader of a nation. She is not somebody that has created a massive company that has created tens of thousands of jobs around the globe. She's a mother, she's a wife, and she also happens to be the Princess of Wales. The speculation continued. There was a picture of her with her mother in the car. The trolls suggested, no, that's not actually her. A picture was released on Mother's Day, an attempt to try and quash the rumour-monging that was going on. Unfortunately, it transpired that that picture had been edited. And therefore, this not only increased the speculation, but led to various accusations being made. Thereafter, another photo, was, uh, another photo appeared of her in a car with William. Once again, their individual stating, look, she's looking the other way, it's not actually her. This shows the rift between her and William. There then came the video that was produced at the shops at Windsor, where a noticeably gaunt and makeup-free Kate could be identified. It's not her, cried the naysayers. It's a body double. It's CGI. And then, finally, as a consequence of this unrelenting pressure and bullying, the Princess of Wales has been moved to issue a video where she has explained what has happened. As the Time reports, when the Prince and Princess of Wales considered how to break the news of Kate's cancer diagnosis, their first question was not, how will we tell the world, but how will we tell the children? That is demonstrative of the way that an empathic individual such as Kate would approach matters, and also William, as a normal, who has considerable emotional empathy for those around him. They're not concerned with wanting to tell the world in the way that a narcissist would, they're concerned about the impact upon their children. As a consequence of that approach, it meant that they kept the diagnosis private as they both came to terms with the shock of finding out that Kate, an otherwise healthy 42-year-old, was now facing a period of protracted treatment. As conspiracy theories raged around the world, we now know there were three reasons why the princess chose to keep the news private. Prince George, 10, 
Princess Charlotte eight and Prince Louis five. A Kensington Palace spokesman said the princess wanted to share this information when she and the prince felt it would right for them as a family. Aides explained that the announcement was timed to coincide with the start of the children's school Easter holidays, which began at 4pm on Friday, two hours before the princess's video was released. Kate and William were waiting until then to break the news to the world so that their children might be shielded from the media coverage they knew would follow. No doubt it would also mean they could avoid any unnecessary questions or comments in the school playground for a few weeks. Pausing there, again this is demonstrative of the emotional empathy that both William and Catherine have for their children. It's understood that the children were told before Kate made the video, filmed in the gardens at Windsor. In the film, which is two minutes and fifteen seconds long, Kate sits on a wooden bench with a flower bed of daffodils in the background. Dressed casually in jeans and a striped jumper, she says, Most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that is appropriate for them, and to reassure them that I am going to be okay. She adds, As I have said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal, in my mind, body and spirits. A close friend of the family said Kate and William had been doing everything they can to protect the children so they are not aware of everything that's gone on. The children at school talk, so that has been their primary concern. William has been so supportive. So much for those bandying around the suggestion that he was having an affair, that she had left him. It was also explained that the reason why William had to duck out of a memorial service was because that was when Catherine had learned of the cancer diagnosis. An entirely appropriate explanation, but of course at the time there were those that read something sinister into it. I recall one of the conspiracy theorists suggesting that William, because he'd assaulted Catherine and put her into a coma, that this was when she had come round from the coma and William had to go to the hospital to speak to her first before anyone else to ensure that the stories were straight before anybody else got involved. There has been a predictable outpouring of both support for the Princess of Wales and many people extremely critical of the media and those on social media who have been privy to the dissemination of ridiculous theories and insults. The trolls have been proven to be wrong. All of their theories about marital rift, physical assault, being in a coma, were precisely a load of horseshit. Certain celebrities, Kim Kardashian, Blake Lively, they had joined in the almost fun that people were engaging in with the where is Kate speculation. Now, as a consequence of this disclosure, which the Princess of Wales, as a truth-seeking empathic individual, has felt bullied into dealing, into disclosing, having to explain her personal and private circumstances, where she had preferred to keep it quiet, where she has felt that she's obligated to explain, to halt the ridiculous speculation that has gone on and on and on. There are those that say, well, if you'd have said this at the beginning, you could have avoided all of this. Why should she have done? She's not obligated to tell the hoi polloi about her personal and private medical circumstances. Would they expect other people to demand that they disclose their private information? As I mentioned before, the fact that she's a public figure is irrelevant. This medical information is personal to her. She chooses to disclose what she wishes to disclose. People were told she was having surgery. She was convalescing. She would be back at Easter. That's all that they needed to know. Providing that in itself was more than was necessary. The cancer was found after the surgery. And naturally, as a consequence of treatment, 
and wanting to ensure that the time was right to tell the children and to come to terms with this diagnosis, time has been spent dealing with this new event. This, of course, provided an information vacuum, and whilst it was the business of nobody other than the Waleses themselves, all of these individuals started to speculate. But not just speculate, they engaged in unpleasant and nasty observations. We saw, of course, that this one's wife couldn't help but get involved in relation to the photographs, for instance, hating the fact that she wasn't the centre of attention. But many of you have asked me, HG, in light of this revelation about the Princess of Wales and her cancer diagnosis, why is it that we have seen individuals, in effect, double down on their ridiculousness by continuing to maintain that it wasn't Kate on the bench in the striped jumper, that they continue to make nasty comments about her, notwithstanding the fact that she's being diagnosed with a life-threatening disease. But consequently, I've created this video to help you understand the mindset of those that engage in this behaviour. Many people get caught up. They get caught up because of the, hum the human herd mentality that exists, that they lead generally uninteresting lives, and therefore they obtain a vicarious thrill by examining and dissecting the lives of others and commenting upon it. It's gossip. In some instances, the gossip is harmless. It's a chinwag in the pub amongst friends. But in others, it takes on an all more sinister complexion as a consequence of people putting out theories on social media that again get picked up by others and resulting in the tsunami of pressure that the Princess of Wales has felt at a time when she has not only received an unpleasant diagnosis, but one that could potentially could threaten her life. Not only has she had to deal with that, she then has to deal with legions of morons, essentially metaphorically knocking at the castle gates, demanding, what's wrong with you? Where are you? Tell us. We demand to know. These individuals engage in this behaviour because they fail to recognise the boundary that ought to be there with regard to, hang on a moment, this is personal and private. Leave it be. Many of them are simply involved because they've nothing better to do. There are those, of course, that are involved because they've nailed their colours to a particular mast with regard to the dispute between Team Wales and Team Sussex. Many of these individuals are sugars and have engaged in a entrenched dislike for the Princess of Wales, which isn't actually based upon any actual evidence. The Princess of Wales is a kind, compassionate, caring, empathic individual. She's not a saint, she's not perfect, but she's not an intrinsically nasty individual that tells lies for the pursuit of control, that revises history in order to draw fuel. Nevertheless, as a consequence of mindless, rather thick idiots who are unable to access and analyse evidence, they have decided that she is a figure that should be disliked, that should be hated, that should be pilloried, and thus they have done so. And the problem is that some of those individuals have done that because they're narcissists themselves. But the much larger group of those trolls are essentially, and I use the term in a looser sense for them, normal. This means that they actually do have some emotional empathy, but they don't have it for the Princess of Wales, because one, they don't actually know her, and two, they've already made a decision based upon misinformation that they've taken against her, and that has eroded their emotional empathy for this particular person. Because they've decided that they're going to support this one's wife, which therefore means that they can't like the Princess of Wales, because in their minds they're diametrically opposed, this results in a diminution or removal of emotional empathy for the Princess of Wales, and causes these individuals to behave as they have. Many of them are poorly educated, 
are quite clearly thick, and a combination of a lack of proper upbringing, a lack of good manners, a lack of intelligence combined with an absence or diminution of emotional empathy has resulted in the trolling which has gone on repeatedly. Some of these trolls are indeed narcissists, individuals who have no emotionally, emotional empathy whatsoever, who join in with this pillaring because it enables them to assert control over an individual indirectly and allows them to draw fuel from people's responses to the things that they put on X, for example. But the vast majority of those trolls are actually from the normal grouping, but they don't have or have reduced emotional empathy for the Princess of Wales, and combined with the fact that they support Team Sussex and that they're not very bright, they have engaged in the repeated trolling that's gone on. Now that they have learned that the Princess of Wales has cancer, there are those of you that would think, well, surely they ought to put their hands up and go, I was wrong. I've been advancing these various theories about her. I now realise that was incorrect, and I actually feel thoroughly ashamed of myself. You may find some individuals doing that, but they'll be in the minority. Why? They're in the minority because it's easier to continue to lambast an individual and double down on the lies and the misinformation than to actually do the decent thing and put their hands up and say, actually, I'm wrong. They know that they are wrong, but they won't admit to it because that's too much like hard work. And instead, it's just easier to stay on the course. Remember, there are enough of these fruitcakes and idiots that they can still gang together. Once upon a time, it would have been the case that you would have the village idiot who would come out with these conspiracy theories, and everybody in the village would just ignore them and boo them or have nothing to do with them when they went to the pub. And they would have to keep their ideas to themselves because they had nobody that would be receptive to them. Because of the internet and social media, these village idiots are actually able to get in contact with one another, and this emboldens them. Accordingly, there's no sense of peer pressure against them which would cause them to apologise. And instead, the decency which could exist among some of them becomes extinguished by their refusal to back down and issue an apology because it's easier to stay in the group and continue to maintain that even the cancer diagnosis, for instance, is fake. Accordingly, certain individuals would apologise and recognise that they are wrong. But actually, as a consequence of the way that the world has become, much of it because of the echo chambers within which people operate, the polarisation that has come with social media, and the overall empathy fatigue that has occurred, you're less likely to have that happen than it used to be the case. An alternative would be that even if they were not moved to apologise, that they would at least keep quiet, that they would shut up and not issue anything else. Again, there may be some that will do that, but the point remains that others, because they feel stupid that they've been shown up, because they feel stupid that the position that they've adopted now turns out not to be true, they can't suffer the lack of face associated with it. Their narcissistic trait of pride causes them to continue to maintain that this situation is a falsified one. Again, there will be narcissists within this grouping who would not apologise because they don't have the cognitive empathy to do so. They won't stay silent because silence doesn't achieve anything for them and thus they continue, with their absence of emotional empathy, to continue to issue comments which are unpleasant and hurtful. Thus, a small group might just apologise. A small group may well just fall silent. But already, within moments of the princess's video, on X, which tends to be quite the cesspit for these individuals, the comments were appearing. And as you can see across the screen, just a small selection of some of the observations that have been made 
around the time of the announcement, shortly thereafter, that it was sent to me by other people on X, highlighting the nasty, snivelling, unpleasant observations that are being made. These individuals continue to troll because they're not bright. Their emotional empathy remains eroded for the Princess of Wales. And, because of their own echo chamber minds, it's easier just to keep on saying, well, it's actually fake, that this is all made up, she hasn't really got cancer. Even if the Princess of Wales was to visit these naysayers and say, here is a signed report from a doctor confirming, here are the charts, here's the analysis of the blood work, etc., proving that I have cancer, they would still not accept it. Why? Because they are incapable of critical assessment, critical analysis of evidence. They become so entrenched in their views, as a consequence of belonging to a particular club, that they are incapable, even when presented with bona fide evidence, which would readily stand up in any court, they're incapable of accepting that. Even if Catherine were to show them the outcome of chemotherapy, they would still suggest that it was a ruse in order to cover up something else. Because their absence of emotional empathy or reduced emotional empathy, combined with the fact that they're stupid, and because they've signed up to a particular mindset, causes them to be incapable of of changing position. This is why the trolling continues. I know many of you have contacted me expressing absolute disbelief at the nature of these comments in the light of the fact that a woman, who is both wife and mother, has confirmed that she has got cancer, that it makes perfect sense as to why she has behaved as she has, and yet still they do not believe her, and they still continue to issue unpleasant observations, primarily through social media. Much of it is the bravery of the keyboard warrior, and it's the herd mentality that these individuals, having grouped with those of a similar mentality, feel emboldened and encouraged, that they feel that they will gain validation from those within the group to the comments that they make, and that common sense, well, they don't possess any. People have asked me, are all of these people narcissists, HG? Well, as I explained earlier on, some of them are. Some of them are. And they need to assert control. And the suggestion that they're wrong, of course, threatens that need for control. And the simplest response is the first line of the twin lines of the narcissistic defense, which is denial. No, she hasn't got cancer. It's still being made up. There was somebody who posted on my timeline on Twitter on X, who had suggested that the video that many of the, you will have watched of Catherine in the garden was actually CGI. I responded by stating, there's no evidence at all that it's CGI. Provide me with that evidence. It was a reasonable request. The individual's evidence was this. I am an expert. I've watched lots of footage and therefore I'm able to spot CGI. Hmm. That was the totality of their supposed evidence, their opinion, based on the fact that they've looked at some footage. I responded again, pointing out, so you have no evidence. Your evidence is your own opinion, having watched some footage. I won't be calling you as an expert witness, but thank you for clarifying that you have no evidence. The individual accused me of being aggressive, naturally deflecting from the point. None of my correspondence with this individual was aggressive. It was to the point. I didn't use any ad hominem attacks. I didn't use any profanity. But of course, this individual doesn't like to be told that they are wrong. And therefore, they have to react in a manner of saying, oh, you're being aggressive towards me. No, I'm not. I'm simply pointing out that you're wrong. The individual, to be fair, did say, I could be wrong. Well, you are. And then thereafter, blocked me. Simply done, of course, because they couldn't stand the fact that I pointed out, politely, albeit firmly, that they were wrong. 
And it's individuals such as that one, and others that you'll have seen across social media, where it is pointless engaging with them. Because these particular trolls, some may be narcissists, thus you're going to go up against their inherent need for control. But the other aspect is that when you make a reasonable point to them, pointing out the error of what they've got to say, and the lack of decency in the comments that they're making, you will find there is no retraction, no apology, no, I've made a fool of myself. They will just double down, and they really are not worth your time. These trolls principally come from the normal group of people who have no emotional empathy for you, and certainly not for the Princess of Wales, as a consequence of not knowing her, and as a consequence of not being very bright, so they're unable to critically analyse evidence, and furthermore, and chiefly, they've already signed up to Team Sussex. Many of these individuals are sugars. And rather than accept that they are wrong, hold their hands up, and shut up for a while, they have to bristle by pointing out, this must be fake. Anybody with functioning brain cells can see that these individuals are trolls and they're stupid. Anybody that has an iota of common sense can see that these individuals are warped, useless losers. They can't see it themselves. They're unable to realise that they're thick. They're unable to realise that they lack the ability to critically analyse evidence. They do not realise that their views are simply formulated as a consequence of the regurgitation of arguments that are posted within certain groups. But many of you have expressed your shock and disbelief at these behaviours and have asked me to explain them. Thus, as part of my continued education of people's behaviours surrounding the attacks upon an empathic individual, I have done so. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.